Apologies to anybody that watched my previous video about playing Super Nintendo games on the, the GameCube. Um, I guess a lot of people thought it was actually gameplay of or game footage of me doing that. It was actually just me talking about it. So if I misled you on that, I do apologize. Uh, that's not what I meant to do. Um, anyway, I got this guy in the mail. I don't know, a week ago or so. I don't know to see. It'd be nice if it would focus. It's a. Uh, I can't even. It's not even a real symbol. That's so an adapter for your uh, for SD card for the GameCube. The uh, it's the Wii or the Wi SD memory card adapter. Looks like this. There's the deal if you want to buy it. I think I got it. On it. You got it on Amazon or eBay. I'm sure it's on both. It comes in the little plastic blister pack. It's got a bunch of stuff spelled wrong. Blah blah blah. It actually talks about SNES 9X. It just says play game. This option, once you have chosen the ROM to load from DVD or SD card in the Wiki SD adapter. That's not a complete sentence. Anyway, so what I did was I got a bunch of files on this thing. It's a two gig SD card. Um, I formatted it to uh, FAT to the FAT file system. That's pretty much guaranteed to work with anything. It works with this. Uh, you just slip the SD card in. Oh, after you load uh, the emulator and the ROMs. Uh, the ROMs, I'm not going to tell you where to get them. Just do a simple search, you'll find them. Um, and I put the emulator on the root folder, which is just straight onto the SD card. And I made a, I made a folder called any SNES ROMs, I think. So what I'm using here is a freeloader, and I've got the Viper GC chip, and so it'll load uh, burn stuff. SNES. In my previous video, I talked about how you had to inject every ROM into the emulator, which apparently is not true, because I've got just just the emulator here as a DOL. I'm going to load that, and from that you can load the ROMs. Because it is a pain going through, through every game, through every ROM, loading it into the emulator. So, oh, okay, so I did this on purpose. Um, it's not loaded into SNES 9X uh, slash ROMs folder, so you don't have to go into two folders. You can load it in there, so this would be your SD card, the root, then that's a folder, and that would be a folder. And you can put it in there, in that structure if you want. But I didn't do it to purposely show that you can load it from elsewhere. So retry, didn't work. Yellow is select, cancel. So then you can, you can read the card. And this is SNES 9X GX 4.0.8. And it's Super Nintendo. If you want, you go back down. ROMs. Do some F0. Turn this thing up, it's kind of quiet. Yeah, if you hear some background hiss, uh, that is actually my heater. It's very. I don't want it down, I want it up. It's pretty cold right now, so I've got the heater up. So I'll turn this guy up. That should be adequate. Let's see how it actually runs. And I'm using the uh, the Hori GameCube controller, shaped like a Super Nintendo controller, which is pretty nice. There we go. That's pretty responsive. I guess it, would, it would, be, would be responsive no matter what. I mean, unless the emulator was junk, but this is one of the better emulators, even when it's not on GameCube SNES 9X. Tilt back and forth. Anyway, that's enough gameplay. Um, now, to get to the menu for this, for this emulator, it's a bit funky. You've got to... All right, here's the combination to get to the menu. A lot of the emulators for the GameCube, you just press Z or select. It's pretty much the same thing. Uh, there's no select on the GameCube. Of course, there's a start button in the center. Well, let's the wave bird here. There was no select button at all. So a lot of the emulators, they will use the Z button as select. Um, or they'll use it as a menu. Um, in this one, what they did was... You gotta hold L, R, X, Y, and then there you go. 
You can save, load, you can settings, reset it. So we're gonna go to game settings, button mappings. I oh cool. You can do super scope, just fire. You can, apparently you can use a mouse with this. That's pretty cool. Uh, video. This one, I've unfiltered original. I ran it earlier on one of them, and it looked like junk. Uh, the position you can move, you can move it around. No, it was video mode that I did. Uh, automatic. I do like that you can change uh, the settings as far as what region you want it to be in. Um, when I started this disc, the freeloader, of the copy that I downloaded, it actually was not PAL, and you can see that booting up in gray. I'm not sure which hertz it was in. Rendering, let's close it. Uh, that kind of looks like junk. So you're gonna, there's some artifacting here and there. Um, so one of the best things to do would go to video and just mess about with it. Not a whole lot of options, there's three. Until you find one that works best for your TV. Well, let's uh, try some other games. Um, main menu, quit game, okay. Um, and I think the files have to be .smc. The sound really seems to be on point with this. This makes me wonder if I can get Parallel Worlds running in here. Link to the Past runs fine. Hi. And if, if you can get a hold of one of these controllers, um, without the box, it's anywhere from 100 to 130 or so. With the box, you're going to be paying a lot more. I got mine on uh, Divineo.cn, um, I think it was, years and years ago. Um, it was actually as soon after the emulator came out. And I'm not sure why exactly they made these. It, maybe because the emulator came out I, and um, the chips were super popular at that time. Although, you would be really hard-pressed to find one. It's not the Xeno GC right now. I don't know if they made it because of the emulator, but they're fantastic controllers. They feel just like a Nintendo product. And that seems to work. Um, it's got pretty good compatibility, it looks like. Let's go some Mega Man. Capcom. Oh, maybe <laughs> I forgot I put this on here. Not really what I wanted to do. Let's go. Now I've got an adapter that uses it connects. What is this thing? The retro adapter, and I got that I don't know, a couple weeks ago, and it looks like this. It actually looks like a 64. Um, it's got the GameCube controller. It's for Wii to plug into the GameCube um, controller slots, or the controller ports on the Wii, um, but it has Nintendo port and Super Nintendo. The Nintendo one works just fine. Super Nintendo. I got a controller here, but I think the controller is. A piece of junk. It feels fine, but the internals are all messed up. Maybe some sort of sensor deal, or there's some soldering in there that's gone wonky. I, I really don't know. It doesn't look like anybody abused. It's not cracked or full of junk. So I'm not sure what that's up. Maybe it's the adapter. It doesn't work correctly, but I'll do that in a future video. Let's see. So this, this is nice that you can just load the emulator and then load any ROM or any game you want from that and not have to inject the file into everything. Now some of the game is going to be a bit weird if you have this controller. You're going to jump with B and shoot with Y. So as you go, you got to do it kind of funky. 
That or I'm just really bad at it. Right, let's try another game. The simulator seems to work really well. Ah, Star Fox 2. I wonder if that's anything like the actual Star Fox 2. This one seems to be lagging a bit. But Star Fox, I think it used the Super FX chip. I think. So maybe the emulator is not up to par with uh, with emulating that. Seems to be a bit laggy. Oh, these are all Super Mario hacks. Uniracer. It's got some 3D stuff to it. We'll see how well this runs. Seems to be doing okay. Um, visually, it seems fine. The sound seems a little choppy. Turn this up. Race. More stunts. Give you bigger boost. I do not know how to play this game or really what's going on here. I'm not sure how to play this, but it seems all right, but the audio is a little wonky. So yeah, if uh, if you have a way to boot or even get a Xeno, Z G, uh, Xeno GC chip and solder it, and then download Freeloader, which is free, um, get one of these guys for, I think it was under 10 bucks with, with shipping. So a Geno Z, uh, I can't speak, a Geno uh, GC, Xeno GC. Um, Tongue twisted. Uh, plus uh, freeloader, which is free, like I said. And then this guy, um, this adapter, plus an SD card, which I'm sure everybody's got one laying around. I think it should cost all less than 20 bucks, just a bit of soldering. Um, I used to not like soldering, but after doing it once, you either burn yourself or <laughs> you feel the heat and you don't want to burn yourself, and you can go through something. Not fairly quick, but without making too much of a mess, really. And the GameCube is not not too bad to solder for. I'm two of them, I think, two different revisions. Not that bad. So yeah, this is uh, playing Super Nintendo games on the GameCube. If you have the means and just a little bit of cash, I'd say go for it. It does seem to work pretty well. And uh, having this guy compared to this, I mean, it feels better because it's Super Nintendo, but if you can find one of these, that's Komodo, if it doesn't show up there, if you can find one of these, pop in a Super Nintendo controller, you're golden, you can just play away. This one runs. And I used to actually have this one in the cart. I thought it was cool. I liked it. Nobody else seemed to. I do not remember how to play it. And it died. Oh, you got the counter that goes down. Oh. That's horrible. <laughs> now I see why nobody liked it. All right, well, thanks for watching. If you have any questions about how to get stuff up and running, um, can't really answer anything about soldering, but if you get it all working, you got um, all the stuff going, and for some reason you can't get the files loaded, uh, let me know, and I'll try to help you out if I can.
Thanks.